and this is The In Show. And I'm your host, Gus Summers. Good to be back with you today. That's right. We are broadcasting live from the Sunset Strip in our In Show studios from the entertainment capital of the world, Hollywood. And we have a great pair of in-studio guests, Mr. Brian McGuire, Mr. Mark Fletcher. Gentlemen, thank you again for taking the time. Thank you for uh, having us, Gus. Yeah. This is a real honor. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Lots to talk about. Sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, as everyone knows, you know, I'm a big movie buff, so, you know, right up my alley. You know, I love, uh, I love uh, uh, film, cinema. You know, I'm a, I'm a cinephile, so it's uh, one of my favorite subjects. You know, you guys... Mark, you're an actor, producer, all, uh, all sorts of things. You know, Brian, you're in the industry. Are you guys big movie buffs? Did you grow up loving film, or did you grow up loving the, the technical side of film, you know, the camera and uh, the sound? Yeah, I, I would say for myself, I definitely uh, was more into, like, the, the heart and the... And the what a movie, how a movie could make you feel and stuff like that versus like the, the technical stuff. I mean, I, nice. I, I feel like I've gotten more into the technical stuff. The more I've become <laughs> a filmmaker, the more right. nerdy I, I, I've gotten. <laughs> and I do believe that filmmakers are the nerdiest people on planet Earth, and rightfully so. But yeah, I, I liked the movies that could make you, you know, give you different strange feelings. And as I've gotten older, I feel like I keep finding movies that like are presenting different sort of feelings or whatever that are not your typical straight like this is entertainment you know maybe it hurts a little bit more than uh, your you know hollywood movie or something like right. that but yeah but yeah so yeah all my movie shaped my life for sure no no as, as you're asking if, if i can just uh, yeah. uh, explore that a little bit the, these new movies that you that you're enjoying is it the the storytelling the way they've kind of changed it up you know like pulp fiction the way they kind of change up the, the acts or is it the, the acting or just something that draws you you know a little darker stories right. sometimes yeah, yeah. I, well I, I guess I, just to get this out of the way like I'm a huge Jim Jarmusch fan like I love okay. his films and the way his films can kind of you know uh, seem to, to move at a slower pace but then like build and yeah. and other ways that okay. you're used to a film building or something. Another filmmaker that I really like is Todd Salons, the guy that made Welcome to Dollhouse Happiness, okay. and storytelling. Like, every film that he's made, I think, is pure genius. You know? <laughs> Those fringe elements of yeah. that. I got gotcha. I, love, I love how he's able to, like, have these... Uh, lines of dialogue in his film that are so like I feel like I've heard said a million times by a million different people throughout my life and when you hear that line that's so commonly said said perfectly by like a great actor like Philip Seymour Hoffman or somebody they yeah. said in his cast it's like, right oh my god it's the funniest thing in the world to me yeah so. you know, you know I'm, I'm glad you say that because watching you know, you know I've been watching movies for forever you end up I don't want to say you see it again, you know, you, the, similar lines, similar um, acting styles, but you, but I look for those moments uh, of, of truth, of clarity, yeah. and, it's, and it seems to come from the actors that have been around, that allow themselves to explore. Have, have you found that, or, you know, either one of you, you know, when you, you're watching your films, that you're exploring these, uh, you know, these uh, other elements? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I know you're, you're, Mark, you're an actor and everything. Do you find that? Do you watch movies in that manner to see, you know, there's Michael Caine. Oh, he did that great. Well, I, I find I like it better when all of a sudden I, everything, because they're so good, everything disappears, and I'm just in the it, mood with them. And nice. I'm just feeling this thing. It's like, I'm like, I felt that way. Yeah. Like Philip Seymour Hoffman when he's like, punching the steering wheel on Boogie Nights or something like that. Like, <laughs> but it's like you feel like so stupid because you did something and it's like and I relate to stuff like that. Right, right. And they're really feeling... I got a pound. And besides just like doing the natural thing, something yeah. unique and found in the scene. Well, it's funny when you're acting because yeah. not, not only am I just directing and writing films, I, I'm still acting, but uh, with, there's there's times where you're acting and it feels really good and then your brain becomes aware of that moment where you're like oh this is really oh god i just blew it you know as soon as you've like had that thought like well, i'm doing great this is i'm on it then the next thought is like how am i thinking i'm doing great when i'm supposed to be thinking uh, that my baby just died i'm not supposed to be is. thinking yeah, yeah right yeah, exactly yeah. so then you find yourself off and you know yeah you can chase that dragon all day long if you want oh i like also those moments of like those you'll have the one line in the film or play whatever and it's a line that you've always felt you know, like I remember there was a line something like 
I, I'm just awkward around people. But then you're turning and telling someone. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm this moment. I'm just going to tell them how I feel all the time. And it's, it's weird because you're like nice. letting everyone know at once, but you're having this intimate moment. Yeah. So a moment you can have like that. Which, which you've just kind of let everybody in the world know that you're yeah. sort of awkward. I'm, I'm not awkward. <laughs> awkward. <laughs> I'm, the world, I'm so awkward. I'm yeah. well, beautifully it, awkward. Yeah. yeah. Well, one thing that's everybody, and everyone just hides it. True. Yeah. <laughs> I, if I learned how to hide it better, then maybe I'd be easier in life. <laughs> <laughs> or not. <laughs> yeah. You know, no. Um, uh, you, you're in great company. Yeah. So. <laughs> we, we, only, we, we only see the, the Photoshop version. <laughs> that, that's great. Yeah. You know, you know, I, I, I love exploring uh, with filmmakers and uh, you know, and actors and everybody the, the process because it's people will watch a movie. Oh, what, oh, what a great actor! What a what a great film! But they don't understand it. I'm not talking about the technical process. But what it takes to get to that moment, boy, I'm right there. Yeah. Did, did did you, uh, if, for, for you, Brian, uh, was there a, a class that you took? Was it just a natural exploration of, you know, self and, you know, along with, you know, all the other things that you learned in Hollywood? Yeah, I feel like there, yeah, there's finding, a, I found acting probably at the age of 18 or 19, somewhere around there. And mm -hmm. it was like when I found it, it, it kind of gave me a... a it gave me an idea of like what the rest of my life up to that point was about. I'm like, oh, that all everything I'd been through was kind of like for this. And so then at that moment, then I started to kind of like explore myself a little bit more. Start read. I started started reading a lot more. Started writing. Started learning how to play music. I just kind of wanted to to learn everything in the, in the creative fields as much as possible because I felt like it would make me a better actor. And then that that sort of thought is kind of like continued on because <clears throat> as I've started, you know, I wanted to to write roles for myself and, and whatnot. So I started to write, and then that turned into directing. And the more I seem to to learn about every aspect of filmmaking, the easier the other ones get, you know. Right. And I feel like as uh, if if you're going to be a director, it's best to know the position of every job on a on a, a movie set. So therefore, you can have those conversations with everybody and speak in their terminology and their dialogue and whatnot so I've kind of gone through the the technical aspect of each of my film now like well I'm on my seventh film and I've done I've, I've been there for the editing I've done the coloring for some of them I if I didn't do the coloring I sat next to the colorist you know the same with the sound everything so to have like a full sort of knowledge of it all right. to be able to tell the story in the, the best fullest capacity all right now is it is that in just so that you can have that technical know-how, or is it that type A personality coming out? And yeah, I think <laughs> it's it a, maybe a little bit of both. But I feel, yeah, I, yeah, I, it's it's like I yeah, the hunger for life, the hunger for knowledge, you know, like yeah. the the hunger for self-knowledge and stuff. It's like one one step leads to the next, sort of. And uh, sure, you know, yeah, I, each movie that I've made, like I, I don't feel like I could have made the last one without making the one before it, kind of thing. You know, even yes. if they're completely different subject matters, it it, it just sort of gets to answer a piece of. Uh, of my heart or something like that so then I come okay I satisfied that for a moment now let's move on to this next yeah. one yeah. and you know we've the, these seven films that I've made we've the, we've done them all in, in the, about the last five years too so it's been like yeah. uh, a, an education on top of an education there hasn't been much time to think about right you know what we're doing well I mean there's times to think about what we're doing wrong but as far as like what the story is that we want to tell there's no like outside feeling of like oh I need to tell this type of story to because this or that it's a, we're just telling the stories that we right. want to tell which is mm -hmm. uh, I feel like really great instead of feeling the pressures of like I need to make a Sundance movie or I need to make a Hollywood nice. movie or I need right. to make a you know it's like right. let's just make a real good original movie and you know yeah. Shoot for the best and see what happens. Yeah, you know, beautiful. So that's beautiful. been the idea. Yeah, and uh, you know, kind of the same question for you, Mark. Yeah. Um, you know, when, when you're exploring, you know, for, for yourself, you know, you're acting and and uh, you know, you're trying to develop characters, you know, life experience, what you've learned, you know, from you know, from classes or you know, other individuals. You know, what's kind of your process? Um, I don't know. It's kind of a hodgepodge. Sometimes I do nothing and like. Like, nice. I just read it over and over and over and over again. Yeah. But usually, I do some 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 way of personalizing. Right. And I kind of look at it 
you know, I studied at a Circle and Square in uh, New York, which is interesting because when I showed up, Philip Seymour Hoffman and John C. Riley were doing a play. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I was working and I got to see, I yeah. saw every single performance. So it was like really interesting just to see them work. But some of it I like is because I feel like when you're, like however old you are, if you're 42, you're everything from the day you're born and then some all the right. way up. So yeah. I feel sometimes when I'm personalizing or even bringing in a space or a memory, then that character all of a sudden has all those other years and dimensions. No, oh, okay. If I just let it go and then be with the other person that's there, right? Then it kind of maybe might unlock some bits yeah. of shame that that character has that I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that method shame. style. <laughs> I have shame and guilt. I have shame. <laughs> well, you know, I love that. <laughs> sometimes you just gotta have fun, though. Yeah, yeah, right, right. You gotta have shame. Roll like fun. Have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> you, you ever? It's funny because I remember there was a movie, uh, not movie, uh, Superman. Christopher Reeve mm. and he said you know I, I was trying to develop you know what Clark Kent was to me and he goes but to admit it I just actually stole the Cary Grant's uh, character from uh, bringing a baby <laughs> because he was he was goofy and he was right. you know I don't remember if you remember that movie he goes, yeah. I, I, he goes I just stole that's, that's who I was and when after I heard that and I saw it yeah. again mm -hmm. I go Oh, you're right. <laughs> it is uh, yeah, no, that that's, fumbling, you know, professor like. Uh, you know. Well, there's another fun one that, that it's uh, Tom Waits uh, at like the age of like 28, 29. On uh, you know when he's go watch the interviews with him there, and then yeah. go check out uh, Heath Ledger's Joker, and it's it, it's Tom yeah, Waits. Yeah, right. It's amazing. Yes. It's, uh, it's like you know the way he talks and everything is perfect. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's amazing. Now you, you know conversations I have with people as we talk about actors and some. I'm from the point is that you can, you are pretty much who you are. You just kind of uh, adapt to that, kind of change it. And, and, exa and someone says, well, you kind of go along and build yourself through your career. And I would say, well, you, there are actors that are just who they are. And my example is always Al Pacino. Mm. If you ever see him early on, he's Al Pacino. Yeah. He's just gotten a little louder. Yeah. <laughs> but he's always been with Harvey Keitel, you know, Meryl Streep. You know, they've done different characters, yeah. but it's always them. Right. Well, I, there's, uh, you know, Harry Dean Stanton is, no, is yeah. very much uh, of that school. <laughs> he's and, just uh, like that, yeah. And Harry, Harry's been in a few of, uh, a couple of my films. Yes. And, uh, there's that documentary that came out not too long ago about Harry Dean. I saw it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, he, ta yeah. he talks about uh, the, that moment when Jack Nicholson had a part for him, and uh, right. and he's like, "Look, uh, listen, though, but I don't want you to do anything. You're just gonna be the sheriff or whatnot, yes. you know." And it, or, I can't remember what outfit or what it was, but it's like that was enough. It was like just you're gonna put the outfit on, and that's you're gonna be you. Right. And you know, he talked about like that being like the moment that like marks how he was going to act for the rest of his career, you know. <laughs> and he's so loved and, and by so many, and he's yes. such a great actor, you know. He's yes. so fun to watch. And it's essentially just him. Yeah, it's just <laughs> him, you know, in, in different outfits, I guess. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Do you find that, for you, Mark, you know, as an actor, you, you, you know, try to maintain, like, yourself? As you were saying earlier, you just kind of draw on your, your past experience, your emotion. Do you, do you try to invent someone else, like a Jim Carrey? You know, he tries to go out there and be totally someone different or do you kind of you know remain who you are and kind of add layers to it yeah I feel like it always kind of comes from me though I I feel it's interesting because like a lot of people have always said like sometimes I have had something where I did two films back to back yeah and the editor didn't know we used the same cast right that I was this character like as the lead in one and 70% of the other and he goes right how come he wasn't in both films <laughs> yeah, but that, that, so nice. sometimes there is something weird where I, I think some aspects of me will be stronger than others. Right. Or or some aspects of me that weren't so explored in life either, you know. Right. You know, some dominant killer or like a certain aspect. There's stuff in there. That <laughs> yeah, or whatever it is. Shame killer. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you play some weird uh, things. Yeah, it's no, like you didn't really explore that, but there's those sides in you and then right. you're bringing them up. So, right. you know, but then I might look at somebody and see how they're doing and try to walk like them or something. Right, pick pick up little things that yeah, that they yeah. picked up. Yeah, because that's interesting. Because you know, kind of what I've thought is, like you're saying, you know, you have that moment. Well, both yeah. of you, you know, you have that moment. So you're watching, you know, like we mentioned, Michael Caine, and he does this, 
Did he just do it for that one moment and it's gone? Yeah. Because he can't repeat it, but you saw it. Can you, you know, you, try, you, you know it's yeah. not his natural, you know, Michael Caine. Some yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah that's but it, like, yeah. yeah, that's it. But yeah, like, um, like uh, going back to Al Pacino, uh, Scent of a Woman. Mm -hmm. You know, that was kind of his whole yelling thing, but it was... <laughs> Never left. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that that became, and then he stayed with that, and now, you know... Moved on from there, yeah. yeah. Another fun little story. Uh, uh, John Hawks, another great actor who uh, we've gotten to work with a little bit. Um, he was telling me a story about a, a movie that he did where he did a, a voice for... There's a feature film that were, it's all mannequins that are the yeah. main characters, and, and uh, he was a voice for one of them. And he, in his mind, thought, like, how is this going to work as a whole feature or whatnot? Right. And when he saw the rough cut of it, he was, like, amazed at how these mannequins came alive with the angles of the camera, the lighting, the music, and, and the dialogue all, like, there firing on full cin cylinders. And what he took from that, or what he had at least said to me at the time, was it showed me how little I had to do as an actor, you know, because it's nice. like here this mannequin is like becoming alive and it's right. like a wood, so you know, it's like sometimes less is more, see, as I like to say. You know? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> or more, however you want to yeah, say. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. They call it new like being neutral. I remember doing some thing where they were talking about doing workups. I think of characters are people that are neutral and then you start really thinking and it's like, well, if you're in Vietnam down or in some war zone, you're walking down, you, you're listening, you're not putting any thing extra you're just like there because you're like ready to go in any direction you right. have to go yeah. so sometimes they're talking about that but then the slightest little move when you're coming from nowhere is like it's yeah. huge yeah I, it, there's so many ways of getting there and yeah. everybody has their own it seems like yeah you know? absolutely yeah. you know because I was I was at the um, uh, film festival last night and you, they're running the shorts yeah and uh, there was this movie a uh, short film had a uh, uh, John uh, DeLacy, uh, you know John DeLacy, mm -hmm. yeah, plays a uh, Q on the Next Generation, and that's probably where most people know him from. Yeah. And, and Terry Polo, you know, Terry Polo, uh, she played the daughter in um, Meet the Parents. Okay. Uh, the yeah. Ben Stiller's, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. wife, and it's it's just a little scene about uh, she's a patient and therapist, and they're going back and forth, and it's just them, you know, and they're talking. And there were these moments where I was caught up in it because it's a certain emotion you think the person would feel, and because the so subject matter, you know, uh, you know, they may or may not have, you know, haven't had that experience, but you're assuming that they didn't and they're acting. Right. But they caught it. They caught this little thing that seems so natural that a person in this state of mind would do. I thought, wow, brilliant! It's yeah. it's it's that moment that you're talking. It's like, wow, yeah. look at that! That's brilliant. I, I I felt like I was in my sequence. Anybody else see that? Yeah, <laughs> maybe yeah. it's just oh, me. Yeah. But oh, it, it was it's like, wow, boom! You caught that. Yeah. Is, is that kind of how, how you are when like when you're watching your movies and watching actors and uh, everything? That those are the moments that you try to bring forth in your performance or your films. Yeah, in a, in a way, but like usually there's like so little time to, yeah. to get everything. <laughs> So it's kind of like <laughs> yeah. slam it against the wall and like try yeah. not to pay attention to it on some level, like yeah. you know, because if I did, I would slow the whole process yeah, yeah. down. Yeah, looking for that moment. Yeah, yeah right. But, but they come. Uh, well, I, I feel like on the first movie I made, there was after it was all done and you know completed, and I watched it. There was like a couple places in it where I'm like, wow, that's exactly kind of how I saw it in my head before we shot it, you know. Nice. And I and I remember thinking like, oh, maybe that's how it goes. Maybe you get a couple of those every once in a while, you know. <laughs> then on my second film, I started seeing them more and more, you know, like, yeah. like whoa, okay. And so then I'm like, well, maybe that's the concept is like try to get all the whole movie to be all those moments. That but, moment, yeah. And and I feel like the more I fantasize about it and think of like you know some of these directors uh, that had buckets of money and buckets of time and like you hear how their their process and the hundred takes or this that or the other it's like man it'd be really fun to to go at a film like that but you know i, I feel like i fantasize about more more of these moments and stuff and then when it goes it's like sometimes uh the actors will start and i'm like this is not ex at all what i thought but it's not something that i want to change either i'm just like where's this going to go you know yeah, i want right. to kind of like follow this and yeah. hope that i don't waste the day following <laughs> this and like that it'll add up but yeah. usually it does I, you know i don't know i feel like you got to trust uh, 
trust the, the universe, actors. You know, and, yeah, trust okay, the universe no, around okay, nice. you, the actors, you know, whatever. All that stuff will work out. And I feel like I've had actors in rehearsals that I'm like, they're not there. They're not going to get there. This is like right, scary. And then right. always on the day, they're great. You know, that's <laughs> happened three, four times to me where I'm like, they're just never going to get it. And then they get it, you know. So, yeah, right, right. So it's like, yeah, to, to try not to get in your own way is, is my goal for sure, especially when there's not a whole lot of time, you know. Yeah, right, right. And, you know, some of these... Uh, schedules that we've gone on are like we, the first film was like 10 days the second film wow. because I did the first one in 10 I'm like we should do the next one in 9 which yeah, is right. you know yeah, really impossible. hard <laughs> yeah so you know a little bit more time in the the, the the next few films that came after that and you right. know, but still, there's a, that's usually, I guess, what most filmmakers filmmakers want is more time. I feel like yeah, so, and, yeah. and you and and you know, it always goes back to you. Did you get more because you had a short production time? You know, right. would you waste it if you had more? If you had more money, you know, you're no longer yeah. exploring the things that you need to explore. I need to get well, this now. You yeah. got to give it to me now. In the uh, the last film that we've shot, which is in post production, <laughs> is that's uh, called Sick of It All, and my my nephew. Seven-year-old nephew plays like one of the major parts in the film, so we had like, you know, his school schedule to deal with, and then you know, like so. Right. On the weekends, we had like 20-page days, and then like during the weekdays, it would be like the other main actor kind of for yeah. like six pa or three pages or something. You yeah, know, right. Just, like, sure. To, like, Except for the day we had Foster. <laughs> oh yeah. Maybe we should get into that one. That's kind of fun. Uh -huh. Uh, I mean, yeah, we well, we had a, we had we had an actor show up um, who the, the the character was uh, very drunk, and so he decided to show up very drunk as well too, so. <laughs> to give it the authenticity. Yeah, but okay. yeah, and he gave it a lot of authenticity. I mean, that's for sure. There was like literally out of. A bottle of Jameson's, yeah. like a full. I don't know what, what's with what a full bottle. Uh -huh. uh -huh. like, there was probably like <laughs> maybe three fingers worth at the end of it, and he just got it that morning. Like I said, there's different ways he to get beautiful. there, and uh, the he people have their own different ways of getting there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he, he was an animal, but like the performance is really great, and the, right. you know that. that so was, it paid uh, off, though. Yeah, trust the universe. Yeah. Right? You know? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> As much as you can. To a degree. Know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was a 10 page day, too. Like, so it's like, that's a lot to, to deal with. It definitely woke up. It, it woke everyone up. There you go. I'm, all right. I'm ready for my role. There you go. <laughs> I love it. You know, you know Mark, you're saying all this. You're pretty much uh, kind of the same feeling. You kind of just, you know, set your path and see where the universe kind of leads you or you're like no i'm sticking to my path this is what this is my character and this is how i'm going to play him regardless you know kind of you know what's your process there a little bit um uh it yes it just depends like yeah. I've, I've i've sometimes i've done some roles where i felt really strongly and like one director was like i think we're going here and i'm like i just had this feeling it needed to go somewhere else yeah. it wasn't that we're so far off it's just that whatever i needed to do to get there yeah or feel a certain way and then i've had other times yeah it's just kind of what they need to get yeah and so. you, you just kind of go with it and hopefully the uh you know how's that you know with you when you when you kind of explore that and you have a um you know a cool star there you know, how, how do you work that with them? Do you tell them, or do you just kind of go with it, see if they go with it, or, you know, what's kind of that process? Well, that's why I do, like, rehearsals on oh. certain things. <laughs> okay. But, uh, I mean, I've had some weird things happen. I've, I've, I let things go. I'm like, I've done things where you're even with a play where, I won't get into it too much, but where I've had things that I did not remember as a child all of yeah. a sudden come up. Oh, at that moment? At it, yes. And I looked at it, and I said, all right, I don't know how much of this is true, I don't care. I'm just going to let it go. I'm gonna, yeah. It's probably going to go farther than what really happened. Right. But I'm going to go all the way out there. And I explored it. While, and nobody knew yeah. while we're sitting there doing it. Right. And, of course, afterwards they're like, well, yeah, that was this great. is what we want to do. And I'm like, oh. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't want to do this again. <laughs> yeah, that's... Um, it's interesting. Yeah, that's... Uh, so, director, therapist... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's Best a friend. there's I mean in creativity there's an education to find within yourself yeah, for sure, yeah. you know. Like yeah. unless you're just doing it for attention and, and fame and all right. that stuff, which <laughs> and most people can tell. Problem. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well fantastic. Guys, I gotta take a quick commercial break. Um you know, you know, loving the conversation. Great. Because you know, we're 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 delving into the you know not just the technical side, but you know the process of 
the film, the actor, you know, the things that are inside. So, fantastic. You know, thanks for taking the time. we got to play more time. we got another segment. We're going to definitely talk about your films and everything. So I'm really excited. Again, you know, thanks for coming in. Thanks, Gus. Yeah, you bet, you bet. Hey, well, this is Gus Summers, and you've been listening to The In Show. We have in-studio guests, Mr. Brian McGuire and Mr. Mark Fletcher, and we've just been diving deep and deeper to our psyches of uh, the actor and the director, so who knows what we're going to come up with, so we're going to take a quick bar break and regroup and see what comes up next. So you hang in there. We'll be right back. And this is The In Show. And I'm your host, Gus Summers. It's good to be back with you today. That's right. We are broadcasting live from the Sunset Strip in our In Show studios from the entertainment capital of the world, Hollywood. And we have a pair of great in-studio guests, Mr. Brian McGuire and Mr. Mark Fletcher. Again, guys, you know, loving the conversation. You know, we're just you know exploring you know so much of the process. But uh, uh, Brian, I want to tell you, uh, give you a chance to you know talk about your film. Yeah, well, the uh, the film that we would like to talk about the most is uh, Window Liquor, which is kind of almost uh, right in line with the theme of how this conversation is going. <laughs> but, uh, we, yeah, Window Liquor is about a guy named Ben Wilde who has gone completely insane with a new form of insanity that no other human being has had to deal with yet on this earth. Okay, I love And, uh, you know, Ben is addicted to um, video games, reality television, uh, cam girl website, chat room website type <laughs> things. And, you know, so like kind of like a lot of like social media type stuff that's yes. going on in the world today. And, um, you know, it's about sort of his demise or he's trying to like figure it out and see yeah. if there's a way to cure himself from within. But right. Yeah, cure himself of the addiction to the... Well, the of the world, the yeah, so of okay. the world around him, but it's also sort of like, you know, his past and like the the, 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 the amount of uh, antidepressant drugs and stuff like okay. that that he was fed that uh -oh. sort of like make this combination yeah. cocktail of Ben Wild, you know. So oh, interesting. Yes. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because you have... Uh, I guess you have the basic voyeurism right there, <laughs> yeah. and then the addiction to uh, gadgets. Yes. And then, now I'm curious, um, do you explore uh, this aspect of him of of um, of how he got on, on antidepressant drugs and everything, or did you kind of hint at Some it? Some of that stuff is kind of the the is a little bit of backstory, I would yeah. say. I mean, oh, okay. you kind of like jump right in, and it's told through Ben's eyes, so you're kind of on this like psychedelic trip in, in a sense you know the uh, I mean the movie is a is very strange one because it was made for very little money but was made over a long course of time and, and it took you know uh, there's so many different worlds within the world like the reality television show like that had to be shot and made uh, the video game you know is something that I had to make the uh, the website with the the cam girls and stuff that all had to be made so there's all these like very strange layers that would, about 65% of the film was shot on a cell phone. And it was like one of these things where I, I got my first smartphone. And I was like, whoa, I have a camera on my phone. Like, whoa, and it's full <laughs> HD. Like, this is crazy. This is the nerd part I'm talking yes, about. You know? yes, right. And so I'm like, whoa, I you know, would really love to come up with a with a, a concept or a story that fit the aesthetic yeah. of this phone so like yeah. you know naturally coming up with like something that's about insanity seemed to like really fit right. and also to the concept of like this camera phone that everybody has in their pocket they're, they're shooting their little moments yeah, right. of, instead of having real conversations with each other you know it's like so the eyes of the of most humans are familiar with this camera so I'm like maybe yeah. that will trans transfer over into a relatable quality that the movie has or whatnot you know so it's kind of like really random and bizarre. Mark plays a, a, a character named Billy Walchuk in the in the film, who's uh, Ben's uh, friend from uh, childhood. But when he shows up, it's kind of like he doesn't believe that it's him. So it's like, and there's a lot of conversation that goes on about is he a real person? Is he not? You know, like oh, that kind I of see. Thing, oh, you know? okay, I got Is he that. in Ben's head, or is this really somebody that comes to the door? And okay. that's like kind of. I like to leave in the mind of the audience. Mark might have a different answer. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. You know, like some people look at things differently. At these movies. Well, everybody said so many different things. Yeah, to even view. Yeah, yeah. And and that's why I like to keep it. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I don't have an answer for it. You know? I think there's a lot of been said about it, but it was such an interesting movie because, like, I remember at first like reading it, and, and then even when we we're shooting it, and I had to go grab something so we can shoot it. I remember talking to someone, and they're like, "Oh." What's the movie about? And like, 
I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, you do, but it's like, well, how do you describe it? Because it's yeah. like, and the best way that I could only describe it for me was right when this was going on, right before it, I had gotten out of this relationship that really affected me. Yeah. And it was a weird one, like, some, out of nowhere, like, one minute you're going out with somebody, the next minute, like, yeah. it's over and you don't know why. Right. So then your head starts spinning. Sure. And I felt like that's the way I related to it. It was... It was like you're watching what's going on in this guy's head, and it's spinning, and it's spinning, and it's going down the drain. But because he's got these psychological problems, you're seeing what's going on in his head yeah. instead of the guy just standing, you know, sitting there watching TV and nothing's going on because it's all in his head. He's having the conversation. Yeah, with sound. I mean, it's a, it's a lo-fi, hi-fi, <laughs> like right. kind of technical madness. It's a it's a it's madness on some levels, but. We uh, screened it at the uh, the Los Angeles Downtown uh, Film Festival on July 15th, so it was like the first time we, we got to see it on the big screen. Nice. And, and man, does it play. It's so much more intense when you get that big, you know, that big screen in front of you and the sound starts playing throughout the, the, the movie theater because there is a lot. I mean, like in the scene with, uh, with Ben and, uh, and Billy Walchuk, there's like babies crying. There's like lawnmowers. There's like things that are from the outside world that are consistent. Actually, at one point, like the, the I was thinking about putting a cricket through the entire movie, just like at different volume levels and different parts of the speaker and different parts yes. of the house or what whatnot. But I didn't do it through the whole thing. I thought that would maybe <laughs> drive people. Totally what is that with that cricket? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's um, really no one's yeah. being crazy. <laughs> yeah. But you know that that's fascinating because you know with medication like that, you know your senses become heightened. Yeah. So you would hear, was that kind of where you're going, or is it just you know what you wanted to add to the film, to this character? Well, there, I, I wanted the the character to have like audio and visual hallucinations, you oh, know. Okay. So that was kind of where the the concept behind there, in a sense, is like really accentuate the the sound, so that the uh, you know the audience member has to deal with it a little bit. Right. Know? Kind of actually literally being in his head. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. We've gotten, like, some really great reviews. Like, some of the best reviews that, that I feel that I've gotten for any of my films are, are, are for Window Licker. Oh, wow. And then yet, like, uh, I read a review on uh, on Amazon, you know, that somebody had watched it or whatnot. And mm -hmm. It wasn't for them, as, as was sort of their message. But it was like, this documentary is a little strange. I'm like, this isn't a documentary. <laughs> but, like, I love that somebody could, like, come up with that slant from however long she watched the movie or whatever the deal was, you know. But, you know, I think it's funny. Yeah. That's really yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not even a documentary. Yeah, no, and I, there's, a, there's a guy that's reviewed all my f uh, films, and he really has been a fan of, uh, of most of them. And, and this one, he was like, he, when he watched it, he's like, I didn't get David Lynch's eraser head, but I still like David Lynch, you know. And he's like, I kind of feel that way about this one for you. And this is definitely the, you know, the most psychedelic film yeah. that I've made. And, you know, I feel like in the 90s, there was such, such great, like, yeah, there was Creative great television films. and films, yeah. yeah. You know, and like there was like filmmakers weren't afraid to tell stories that, are, that were different or more unique. And like nowadays, I feel like everybody plays it so safe, and I, I just well, don't yeah. want to be that filmmaker. You know, like I, I mean, I feel like my films are, you know, like Window Licker. There's like accessible humor that like anybody can get, but then there is like it does go to like weird, dark sort of like messed up places you know so right. and and i like intelligent fart jokes you know like if you can make a movie that has a good intelligent fart joke then then i've won that's the way i feel you know so if that makes any sense to you you know <laughs> so, so and i have to ask you give me an intelligent fart joke well i mean geez what is an example of that i i, I mean like in uh, the second film or oh, carlos spills the beans which is a the third film that i've made which I believe is having like a video on demand right now on Xfinity and stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, but that is like this, the whole film's like about like racism and classism and sexism and it's like a giant family. It's like 11, 11 brothers and 11 brothered family that owns this restaurant and the, the main character is impotent and he wants also to uh, become the boss and his older brother is sort of like holding him down, you know. Yeah. So there's like these sorts of like, that's what I mean. Like there is, there's like the, the main character walks into the bathroom dynamics. and he finds yeah. like one of his friends like masturbating on the toilet to like a tranny magazine. So like, 
it, that right there is like the fart joke, right? You know, and then it's like the dialogue within and like what how they would like dissect that that would make it intelligent, you know. But I can't really get into the dialogue right. because it crosses like it verbal sure. lines on, on the air. So, but I hope that kind of clears up. There is an example of that's the the worst one that came to my head right now. So that's apologize. great. <laughs> I apologize. For that. I know it is what it is. You know, I asked. Yes, yeah. But thank you for keeping it mild. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Best I could. Best I could. So is that? I'm, I'm trying to remember. Help me. His name was in my mind. And it just slipped. Um, he made a movie back in the '90s called Serial Mom with a Catherine Turner. Oh, uh, the it, name I, the the movie so I don't know who directed that. So, oh, it, it, he's a famous director, and oh, anyways. Yeah. He wanted. It's a bizarre true story, and it's about this mother who was put on trial because she was it. She ended up killing somebody for a, a weird reason but she was like an everyday mom and just really normal and he said there was a scene he goes I knew I had basically hit it caught the moment made it and everything when Kathleen Turner came bouncing in uh, from the kitchen with this with this turkey or something and for him it was just that moment he goes yeah. ah the 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 pinnacle filmmaking was right there right you know and it was this whole bizarre kind of movie it was comedy surreal it was kind of odd did you, you ever see it, it was, I don't think I've seen that film yeah though. it's called Serial Mom and yeah. you know and uh, so you know you're talking to me and you're talking about about you know the perfect fart joke you know <laughs> here is you know this this moment that you feel is is real right you know this is what yeah. everyone doesn't want to talk about. Sure. But, you know, this is what happens. Well, there's a scene in Carlos Spills the Beans where uh, a couple are at the park and they're having ice cream cones and they're kind of like, you know, getting a little bit romantic. And I actually, I made us wait until to, to shoot that one because the, I, I really wanted a trash can with a chain that was connected to the bench to make it feel like a park, you know, and, okay. and I was not going to shoot until we had that <laughs> trash can chain to the bench because that's, that's the, the life. That's, that's the movie right there. That is the moment, you know, so yes, yeah. I, I have those in smaller, weird, yeah, yeah, strange yeah, yeah. ways. And because to you, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Now, my question is, uh, the flavor of ice cream. Oh, I can't ever remember. Yeah, okay. what ice cream was. Yeah, that's a good question. You know what's uh, what's uh, you know it's a chocolate because you know, yeah, I mean, more fans and everything. You're asking me, it had to have salted caramel on it. Oh, okay. And, yeah, that was, but I don't remember what they were eating. Because you get it, it chocolate could, chocolate chip, I think. Yeah, so I would say because yeah. it could be dip and the, you yeah, know, oh, and the yeah. crack and <laughs> you know, ooh, uh, oh, looking yeah. at. Oh, oh, man, yeah. that's some I don't know visual. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. Yeah. I've been. <laughs> yeah, I guess we all have, haven't we? Oh yeah. You know. But you, Mike, is, are there, are there mm, I don't want to say normal, but moments where you feel, ah, this is it, or do you have to go on the on the fringe like you've been describing? Sometimes you go out there to catch those true moments for you, you know, for yourself and your performance. Uh, well, or is it just it comes mean, as it comes? It's, it's funny. It's one thing that's kind of come through my mind as we've been talking the whole time is really the interesting part of what comes to my mind is that social like oh this is the way you should act this, you know, the social way of yeah. feeling and this and that and then I've noticed it It almost seems like in films then there's a moment where someone has the real moment <laughs> and it's usually like William H. Macy by himself in the middle of the night in front of the thing and, and but then but some people have it really in public yeah. too with everyone and those are the moments where then there's the true moment you feel and yeah. that's where the, the difference lies yeah. is that we get caught up in that Thinking of how we're supposed to feel because there's a social part and then right. there's what we really feel. You know, you know, just I don't know if it's on point to her for him. It's a tangent. Uh, William H Macy. He's another one that captures those moments, yeah. those truthful moments. And do yeah. you remember Mystery Men? Yeah. That movie, Mystery Men. Mm -hmm. He he was a shoveler. Mm -hmm. Remember, that was his gift. Yeah. And there's a moment and I never forget because I feel like it, it's so truthful. But you know, it's not true. He's acting. Right. But it was true. He turns to his, he's in the bedroom and his wife's saying something to him. And he turns around and he says, I'm a shoveler. That's what I do. That's my gift. But he delivered it. It's, it's like saying, you know, I'm an artist. I'm yeah. a painter. Yeah. You know, I paint. But you know, he's talking about shoveling dirt and right. you know, this is what I do. And it was just like, 
that's brilliant. Yeah. You know, you caught that more. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think the, you know, in these odd little movies, these things that, but he's one of those guys that captures those moments. Yeah. You know, comes across, you know, true fully. Yeah, it's really funny, like what what, uh, what we've been talking about, Mark. What you've been saying about, you know, like because in life you're trying to like hide those moments, <laughs> and uh, when you're acting, you're trying to have those moments <laughs> yeah. shine. You right. Know? And I feel like that's why it's like good as an actor to like try to play the opposite of that because t typically in life you're trying to hide some of these things, you know. You're so right. maybe when you're performing, you should be trying to hide a little bit of it too, or <laughs> trying to is the idea, yeah. you know. Well, the struggle. Know. I think that's <laughs> yeah. what's also and right. Will and H Mace is a good thing for that too. It's yeah. a struggle. It's usually that one point in the film where they finally let it, but then only to, to let it, but then to cover it back up again yeah. Yeah. is now like how do you live? Uh, once you've let something out of the bag. Uh, right, right. I guess that's the whole performance. I remember there was a movie um, called The Man with No Name with uh, Sam Elliott. Yeah. And a true story about a, a, a town sheriff. And the, oh, I don't want to spoil that, but have you ever seen it? I haven't seen it. Either. Okay, I don't, it was, it's the ending. And, it, and, it's, and it's how he delivers this ending. Yeah. And it's just like, wow. Again, and it's literally the last scene, and uh, here he is again. You know, you know he hasn't experienced this thing, but here is this actor of caliber. Right. You know, you know what's it take to get there? You know, here, like I said, I had, there was a movie called Casting By, and it was about the casting system. You know, and it talked about the different actors. You had John Boyd in there, Al Pacino, Gene Hackman, everybody yeah. uh, who. Um, uh, who was cast in it? And I, was, and I used that as an example. And I said, there is the. They showed Al Pacino in his very first scene, in his very first movie, it was like a m two minutes maybe. And it was with Mia, Mia Farrow. Yeah. She's walking down this room, he's walking down into a dance hall, and he grabs her and they start dancing. I said, if you looked at him, it was Al Pacino from the very beginning. Yeah, right. You know, he'd never changed. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, that smile that he gives and, you know, the way he talks and, you know, holds her and uh, everything. I was like, yeah. Wow, you know, you know, some of these people are like that. Yeah, you know, it, it, is it just natural? Or, you know, what, you know, what they're have like, you? Their energies are are so huge. Some of these people, you know, they're like entities. You know, and I think that's kind yeah. of like along the lines of what you're saying. It's like with Al Pacino, it's like he gets louder, he gets bigger, but like so does the energy and the entity around him. You know, right. but. Like, I don't know, like there's other actors that, like Gary Oldman, who stays hidden and like goes to all these different random amazing places and, you know, I, I really enjoy that, you know, that style of performance. You, remember, know, the, well. the, you remember, remember The Professional with yeah. Gene Arena? Every time Gary Oldman, you know, took that pill, he did that neck thing. You, you, <laughs> Mark, you, you know, what, what is that? You know, no one takes pills like that, but... Right. Well, that music too. Whenever he did. It. Yeah, he's. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I always remember White Boy Day. <laughs> oh yeah. Nice. Nice. I didn't realize it was him for a little, for a while. And right. I, yeah, I thought it was a black guy the first time I saw it. I was like, who's that black what? guy? I was like, that's Gary Oldman. It's oh, Gary. Wow. It's Gary. What? Of course it was. And then he does Commissioner Gordon, who's just a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hannibal. I mean, yeah, he's played all sorts of yeah. characters. Really Sid Vicious. Characters. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Because, you know, the... You know, again, you know, the, you know, discovering, exploring. You know, we, we, I'm sure we, uh, when you ask him, he goes, I don't know, I did, I just, yeah. <laughs> it just came to me at the moment, and you know, the, yeah. it's fascinating when you when you hear the things that they say. Right, right, yeah. I think it's uh, interesting how people, some people want to dissect life, and then other people want to live it. You it, know? it. Nice. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And that's sort of like. Big, actually, that's like a big theme of window liquor too. You know, it's yeah. like be yourself and yeah. <laughs> antidepressant, yeah. voyeuristic. Yeah. <laughs> Take it on, own, own, own the things you know, the yeah. places you've been, the emotions you've had, and like you know, nice. let them shape you to be a better person. Right. I mean, it's a, it's a fascinating uh, concept, you know, your film because it's basically all of us. That's it. You know, to some degree or another, you know, we're, we're all stuck, you know, whether we like it or not, with technology, one yeah. way or another. Television was the old, you know, radio, television, you yeah. know, and then now, uh, you know, we got our phones. We're all stuck in some sort I of I left the trip. house last night without my phone. I like, you started home. panicking. Just, no, I was <laughs> oh. intentional. Oh, was, was it? Like, okay. Yeah, I was like, let's pretend, because it was plugged in. Let's pretend it's 89. Like, let's pretend like it has to be plugged <laughs> into the wall, and I'm going to leave without it. It was great. Yeah. Like, I, I encourage us 
to all do that a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> Disconnect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I have a technology free day where it's like, yeah. it was just, you know, no computer, no television, just, but, you know, I love to read, so yeah. I don't know if it's kind I'll of read. a, yeah. do you? Yeah, yeah. you know, and there's nothing like holding a book, so I don't know if it's really a, it's what I do anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's my own little ways of getting lost, because I, I picture it and feel it, and I feel like I'm completely in that era. And that, yeah. Yeah. A good friend of ours, this guy Frank, who plays the bass, he's, he's been wanting to do, he's had this idea about doing a day. Uh -huh. He wanted to do like Friday. He's like, no phones, no nothing. Yeah. So, and on top of it, he goes, this is where I'm going to be. And if you all want to meet me, like uh -huh. La Poubelle or something hey, you, like that, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be here Friday afternoon having a drink and eating. Come uh -huh. join me and let's see how long it lasts. Like how many the old show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll meet you here at Pink's. We'll have a hot dog. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, nice. All right. We'll be there. And yeah. It lasts for about four or five weeks. Right, yeah, right. <laughs> Starts to twinkle down. Yeah. <laughs> You're the first one to cuts out <laughs> right, right. hey where are you guys oh well yeah well, you? <laughs> well you know some some jerk will like be have to show up and like tweet about it so all of a sudden uh, like people will show up because they've yeah. heard about it and yeah. ruined the whole thing <laughs> or you know or they or they bring the one guest <laughs> it's like <laughs> the downer right oh yeah <laughs> it's like kind of you're all down. quiet <laughs> oh so you guys are doing this every week no uh. <laughs> anymore <laughs> this was our last one yeah, yeah. actually we, we do different places every week we'll let you know where the next one is <laughs> just not here we never go never go to the same place twice <laughs> that's hilarious that's hilarious that's fantastic you know the, all these things you know glimpses of life of, of you know of um, of reality of what we you know we actually explore you know your film again yeah. you know he, he's addicted to uh, depressants but you know there are people who love alcohol right there are people you know and it's not necessarily just um, prescribed medication over-the-counter medication right There's you know dayquil nyquil you know i think the old days it was nyquil that was yeah. the godsend for a lot of people oh, oh, uh, you know right. <laughs> i can't live without my nyquil right <laughs> You know, it all it's uh, you know, I still it's remember caffeine, those things. coffee, you know, Coca Cola, whatever. It's like yeah. it's our, we're doing it all the time. We're yeah, all absolutely. on drugs all the time. It's crazy. You know, and, and you know, and when you when you look at the mind, you know, person, I think you know, humans, you know, in my own opinion, you know, people always like to say, you know, we're like the animals. I say, you know what? If we're like animals we would be, I think nature had something in store for humanity because humanity is so distinct. Is you know a dolphin. Dolphins just like no dolphins, not just like us. You know, he may think and have a capacity to you know for cognitive thinking, right. but he's not human. And then even when you think you have humans pegged down, you don't. And the my my example is always, if you have another person pegged down, please tell the male sex of our. <laughs> of our humanoids to learn how to deal with the female sex right. because you deal with one forget it right. you're, you're lucky if you if you can follow that journey mm -hmm. but you know and i think that's in the same regard that's how i look at actors you know they're they're not just exploring their own lives they're exploring multitudes yeah. of lives you know and attempting to live that and reflect that and have someone else connect with that i think that's amazing is, is that kind of a, a you know, how do you look at it? And the, and the last, sum all that up in the next thirty seconds. <laughs> I think uh, the way I sum up what you just said there, it's, a, it's about a you know expression and and communication and nice. and uh, being able to relate. You know, uh, like those actors that, that that we all love and stuff that we've been talking about today. It's like those guys have been able to relate to so many people with that. You know, their own originality and their own expression and. You know, I feel like that's that's how you that's how you heal, and that's how we heal as people nice. is through expression and nice. communication. So. Yeah, reaching out. Is the same for you, Mark? Expression, communication, good good way to sum it up. You know, what's yeah, I want to put words. In. I think I mean you're like you're telling a distinct story of someone that's not you and is you. Yeah. So I have I, it's like I think it's interesting that the comic is letting the story actually be told of this yeah. person. Beautiful. Beautiful. Guys, I'm, I'm towards the end. I want to give you a chance to uh, mention social media, you know, Facebook, Twitter, for the right. film, for yourselves, anything. Well, the window-liquor.com uh, window is the uh, the website there. Uh, Lefthousefilms.com. Yeah. And uh, find us there. Say hello. 
Yeah, well, lefthousefilms.com has links to all of the films that we've made so far. Oh, nice. Facebook. There's, there's uh, Facebook. Left House Films. Yes. Window uh, Liquor. Yeah. And like seven other movies. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> nice. find us and say hello. Yeah, okay. Or if you ever hear this and you're in London, it is playing at Rain Dance Film Festival on the 29th and the 1st. No, first. it's in October. But I'm not sure if we we're allowed to say that yet, but we did, so okay. there we go. Yeah. <laughs> to London in October, early October. When the liquor's uh, on the big screen. Oh, okay. whoops. Oops. <laughs> well, there's the oops yeah. moment. And, and you guys personally, Brian McGuire and Mark Fletcher, Facebook, Twitter? Uh, are yes. You, are you like the great Brian My, McGuire uh, and the fantastic Mark Fletcher? I've got a weird name. You won't be able to find me. But be able to find Mark, and then you can find me through there. There's probably a million Mark Fletchers. Through, you know. But we can get it through the website. Yeah. And everything. Window Liquor. <laughs> You're okay, yeah. Window Liquor, the movie. Find it. Search is Google. You know, yeah. Beautiful. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Gus. Fantastic. Thanks again, guys, for taking the time. Appreciate Thank it. You. You bet. Hey, well, this is Gus Summers, and you've been listening to the In Show. We had in studio guest, Mr. Mark Fletcher and Brian McGuire. And we've just been talking about films, method, and just what it takes to, you know, come across to our audience. And of course, you can find them on all those great social media sites. You can look for their film at Winder Liquor. Dot com and of course you can visit us at theinshow.com where you'll be able to hear this interview and catch up on everything that we've been doing and we'll be doing of course look for us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Flickr and all those great social media sites and of course ladies and gentlemen Gus has left the building.